Sneemaster. Hey everyone, Sneemaster here. Just doing a video on the Constellation Aquila by Robert Space Industries. Um, I'm starting from the back of the ship this time because apparently that's how it popped me in in Arena Commander. So here we're in the back of the ship. It's an airlock area with also power plant and gravity generator. We are also here in the cargo bay. We can control the cargo bay from switches on either side, drop it down, bring it back up. It's also got switches inside the cargo bay to manually lift it up as well. We're pretty much in the center of the ship here. We have gravity generators, we have other components on the side that don't open yet, so they're going to unlock those in the future. Here's all the missiles. These missiles actually reach up on top to the missile launcher. We have an airlock that actually opens on each side. So this would be great for quick access to space stations or other ships. And you can actually get out here and fly around if you want. Not going to do that here though. Here's the other side of the cargo bay and the other switches. There's ladders on each side. So you can get into the bay, walk around. Uh, there's switches on the other side of this. There we go. Well, they're supposed to show up. Yep, there we go. Close cargo bay. And you can actually hold uh, two smaller vehicles or one large ground vehicle, even a few flying vehicles in here. And the Aquila has uh, 96 SEU cargo capacity, which is pretty decent actually. It does get a little dark in there though. So I have that flashlight on. So in the main living compartments, you have four beds that also function as escape pods. You can also log out from here. To the left, you have a table and chairs. The table doesn't work at the moment, but it used to, and probably will work in the future once they fix a few bugs. You can't actually sit down on the chairs, though, so at least that works on the big couch thing. Bench, pretty much. Now you have an airlock. Uh, elevator in the middle. You have little storage closets, about five of them. To the right, you also have a gun locker, so you can store weapons there. That'll be handy in 3.15. Here's a bathroom. The toilet doesn't pop out yet. There's a bug. It used to show up. And this is also a combo shower and sink as well. Of course, not functional, so they need to update the ship again. This should have storage on the left side, but it doesn't open yet. And here we're in the bridge. There are other components that for some reason do not work yet. Shield generator where we can repair it manually. We have uh, turrets in the middle and then a pilot seat plus two co-pilot chairs on the sides. It's got great visibility from this front room. Here we're going to take a look at the turrets. The upper turret is a radar sensor array, manually controlled, and the lower turret is weapons. Right now, the sensor array doesn't do much, but you can actually ping and scan vehicles and other targets. For example, uh, rocks and things like that. In the future, though, we should be able to actually do long range scans and pings of vehicles in the distance so that we can properly quantum travel things. We do have actually pretty good visibility from here too, so it is pretty handy for this. I believe in the future you might be able to switch this turret out with an actual weapons turret or something else in the future. And you can see the pinging. It's actually good for night flying as well when you use the ping process. We got radar on the left, we got targeting on the top right. Uh, bottom right of that, actually. And 
we're going to check out the weapon turret down below. It's got two laser repeaters on it. The capacitors are actually really good on the Constellation turrets, so you can keep on shooting for quite a while. So I recommend definitely having a friend in there take out any enemy fighters that may come by. It does have a scanning and pinging on here too, and that is functional. Now, in the past, I believe the lower turret used to actually flip upside down, but here they fixed it recently so that you're facing upright. But yeah, look at the capacitor. It takes forever to uh, run out of laser energy. Here you can see it actually has pretty good visibility, pretty good range. You can get all the way around. The only problem is it's a lower turret, so the upper part of the ship is undefended. Now when the turret goes in, it actually has these armored doors that cover it, so that'll protect it when it's not being used. Now the pilot seat's in the middle. It'll have the most MFDs and controls, but you can actually access most all of those from the co-pilot seats as well even missiles. From the pilot seat, of course, you have access to the main guns. There's four weapons, size 4 gimbaled, and you can change the top two weapons to size 5 fixed if you want. It's got shield controls. It's They've actually updated the MFDs so you can actually control the switches. There's proximity warnings and other warning systems like missile locks. Most of the buttons are individually switchable, which is pretty cool actually, on both sides. And, you know, there's still a few switches they haven't fully unlocked yet, but we'll get those, but a lot of them are useful now, or usable. We have a ship status on the top left. Targeting the top right, you can change all that. And as I said, the weapons are gimbaled, so you can actually aim separately from where the ship's aiming. And these are, right now, laser repeaters, so they are really good at taking out fighters, as long as they get in front of you. The ship itself isn't great at turning, it's a little slow, so that's why the turrets really help a lot when you get attacked by fighters or nimble ships. Now here we're in missile mode. You have the large missile launcher up on top. It's got 24 size 2 missiles. When you do a dumb fire shooting, um, they are firing from an angle, like a 45 degree angle or maybe a little less. So just keep that in mind if you ever do dumb fire shooting of the missiles. There you can see the launcher is a little bit closer and they have a reloading process that pulls those missiles that were in the cargo bay. So they reload themselves from there. I'm going to test out a few missiles here. Now, aside from the 24 missiles that it's got, which are Strike Force 2 by default, size 2, it's also got one size 3 or large shield, which makes it very tough. It's a pretty tough ship. It also has a lot of armor. The Andromeda has a little bit more armored systems and more weapons than the Aquila does. For example, it's got more missiles, and it's got the upper turret. But you can fire four missiles at once on the Aquila and the Andromeda. And if you hit something with four size two missiles, that'll do a lot of damage against most any fighters or medium ships. Now, if you notice, yeah, I'm flying it around. It's a little sluggish, but 
not bad. They've actually improved it a little bit. It was worse about a patch or two ago, but they fixed it up. So their connies are actually pretty good now in 3.14. I definitely recommend them. It's one of my favorite ships. The Aquila will be really great for explorations with that upper scanning turret or using it for mining, resources, and that sort of stuff, at least for scanning them. Here you can see the guns up on top. You can change those top ones, as I said, for fixed. We also have the VTOL engines, so you can land on surfaces without using too much fuel. They're pretty efficient, and they look pretty cool as well. The doors open in the front and in the back they cells. There's a landing gear. When the landing gear comes out, the lower nacelles actually move forward a bit so that it has better balance when it lands. Here I'm showing you the size comparison against these landing platforms. I'm going to try to land on one of those, but unfortunately the ship is just a little too big. You'll see in just a sec. It sort of bounces off the side of those things. Of course, some of that's just my bad flying. <laughs> now the Aquila also has one size 2 or medium quantum fuel tank, which lasts pretty far. Um, the Aquila also has a more longer range quantum drive, so it can fly out a bit further than the other versions. And it's got two size 1 fuel tanks for regular fuel, and it's got four size one fuel intakes, which are near the weapons. Now here we're gonna take a look, go out to the back, and we're gonna go check out the stump fighter, which is called the Merlin. The P-52 Merlin stump fighter has one size one shield generator. It's really maneuverable. Um, it also has two, uh, one size two, Tiger Strike uh, weapon, which is uh, like a ballistic chain gun, and then two size one laser cannons. The ship is very maneuverable. It's great for scouting out or defending the ship against other fighters. Visibility is pretty decent, but if you look forward and downwards under the nose, it's sort of blocked, so you have to watch for that. Yeah, there's a chain gun in the middle and the two laser repeaters on the wings. That chain gun can do quite a bit of damage. And with how maneuverable the Merlin is, it's a great little fighter to at least keep other ships away from the Connie. It's a very fast ship as well. There is no storage on this ship and it's only got one seat, so can't really use it for ferrying people or cargo, but it is good for defense. And you can see how fast it is here. You can dock either the P-52 Merlin, which is the default, or the P-72 Archimedes on two Connies. So if you happen to buy a P-72 or have one, you can use that instead. But that's for a different video. Here we're coming in for landing. You essentially have to line yourself up. If you press N, that'll activate docking if you have a ship targeted. And then you have to line up the center point, the rotation angle, which is the bottom right, little dot. Make sure all those line up, and then make sure physically you're right where that little square is. But it's really tricky, and I still haven't managed to succeed very well with it, so. And notice I'm trying to line it up right and that square in the middle, you want that to be right in the middle of your screen and all in green. But if you hold down the end key, that'll activate auto docking, and then it does it for you. It's a little slower than doing it manually, but it makes sure you don't bump the ship. The Merlin by itself, I think, is about 25 bucks. 
It's not too expensive. Theoretically, you could put a Merlin in the cargo bay too, but it's a little tall, so it doesn't land too well. So here we're going to take a look at the outside of the ship through a little EVA. So here we went into the other door. Here you have some wings. On the Connie Andromeda, it's got large missile wings that pop out as well. You can launch size 1 missiles as well. Another 24 of them. You can see the lower nacelle. There's the upper nacelle with the two weapons. Now in the front here, you have the docking port, but also you have the little escape pod locations, the hatches. So these are where, when people lay in those beds, they can actually escape with escape pods from there. Here's the upper docking collar. Also convenient to get in if you find like a constellation wrecks that are floating around. Good way to get in. But I love the detail and all the little nooks and crannies they put on it. And it looks very armored. It looks like a tough ship. Now down below you also have the little elevator door. That's the regular crew entry. This is how people normally enter the ship when the ship's landed. And that's actually a little docking color, sort of. It's a airlock. So it'll make sure people inside the habitation area don't uh, run out of air when somebody's trying to enter. So you can hear the air. So this is a pretty great ship. It's got lots of entrances. It's very multi-purpose, multi-crew, very useful. Still needs some updates though. So we'll have to see how that goes. But, but yeah, you can see the, the escape pod beds. What happens is the little doors drop down when they become escape pods. And we'll have to see how that works in the future, how the escape pods actually launch though. Here, I didn't talk about it too much, but the visibility in the front is great on this ship. You got the side windows, which give you a great view, but the front too, you don't have too many struts in the way. A few, but but not fully covering it. Now here's a ground vehicle, the Ursa Rover, and on the Aquila, I believe it comes with it. Now the Ursa Rover is a great little rover. It's, it's pretty tough. It's got armor, it's got shields. It can even hold a little cargo in it. Maybe one or two SCU in it. It's also got guns, two size one guns. The shields are size zero shields, which are weak, but good enough to hold off, you know, standard infantry weapons for the most part, unless they use rail guns or something. Now trying to drive it into the cargo bay is tricky takes a bit of finagling to get it right because there's not much width around it so it's a tight squeeze if you want to get in and out of the ground vehicle you have to come in from the back instead of the side door using third person view really helps a lot to make sure that you're lined up right in this ground vehicle somebody can sit on the co-pilot seat and they can control the guns or you can control it manually from the driver's side there's also extra seating on the inside there for uh, other people to sit in there now because it's so tight if you want to raise or lower the cargo bay you have to do it from the front and get out manually can do that and then just climb the ladder up. Now here, I'm just demonstrating what it's like driving the vehicle and firing the weapons. 
it's actually a pretty fun little car. And it works in low gravity as well. It's got little invisible thrusters that sort of keep it down to the ground so it doesn't fly away. And the suspension system is really great. Visibility also. And there are some rovers also by RSI, so same as the Constellation series. If you notice it has independent suspension on the six vehicle, on the six wheels, and the turret pops up up on top, when you're the driver, the turret will just aim at wherever you're aiming. But from the second seat, the co-pilot seat, you can control the turret independently. The Ursa rover is pretty fast, it'll go over jumps pretty well, and it can take quite a bit of damage without blowing up right away. And most importantly, it's enclosed, so any climate issues are not an issue when you're inside the vehicle. You don't have to worry about freezing or burning up or whatever. So that's a review of the Connie and all the other vehicles that go with it. I hope you guys like the review, and um, I'll catch you guys next time. Let me know if you guys have a particular ship or vehicle you want me to review next time. Okay, see ya.